Hey guys, in today's video, we're checking out the Shure Wireless PGX series. This is the second video in my series where I'm going over all of the Shure Wireless products and comparing them. In this one, we're gonna go over the PGX as well as the PGX-D. I'm gonna go over what the difference is between the two of them. They are very similar with a few differences, so the video will apply to either the old PGX or the newer PGX-D. This video will also apply whether you're getting this with a handheld microphone, with a body pack that you're gonna use with guitar or bass or something like that. And also will apply if you're looking for this system with a headset mic or a lavalier mic. Links will be in the description down below to purchase any of those different combinations of the PGX system. If you don't really want to watch the whole video, just want to see if I approve of it. This was actually the wireless system I used for five years and I didn't ever have a problem with it. If you're curious as to why I upgraded, you'll have to watch the rest of the video. However, I still use this wireless system sometimes today and I still own it and it's a great system. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the specs, how you use it, some of the features that it has, some of the options of configurations that you have, difference between the PGX and the PGX-D, pricing, things to know, who this is for and who this is not for. So before we get started, I post videos like this all the time, stuff on wireless gear, finding cheap stuff on Amazon for musicians, MIDI programming, in-ear monitors, stuff like that. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell. All right, let's get started. All right, setup is about as easy as it gets. This is the receiver. Plug in the power on the back. That's ready to go. This is the transmitter. Again, I'm, I'm demoing this with the body pack, so for guitar, but this will apply to any of the models. Put in two AA batteries, turn it on. See it turn green, and you get this little light here when it's ready to go. It means they're synced up, and that is it. Super easy. So in the back here, if you're using it with a microphone, here's your XLR out. If you're using this with like a guitar or something like that. Here's a line out, so you'll come out of that into your first pedal or into your amp. That is it, you're ready to go. It does have more features such as scan and lock and stuff like that, and I'm gonna get over that in a little bit. All right, so just going over some of the specs that you're gonna wanna know for this. The battery life is up to 10 hours with two AA batteries, which is more than enough, that's great. Anything over four or five hours is awesome, that's double that. The operating range is 200 feet, so you can go 200 feet away from this system and it still works. Again, that is going to depend on your environment, and that's true for any wireless system, but up to 200 feet is great range. The frequency range is 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz, so that's the full frequency range and does not cut out any audio quality. There is a scan feature, so automatic frequency selection. It locates the clearest channel instantly. One touch sync, so it's really easy to sync these two together. So you scan, push one button, and they'll sync up together. I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a minute. So on this one, it says up to five compatible systems per frequency band. I did do a video of what to look for in a wireless system. If you're not familiar with that, I would recommend watching that and then coming back to this video because I'll go into more detail. However, something about RF tuning bandwidth and how many wireless you can use at once. With the PGX system, the analog one, you can use up to nine systems per band for a maximum up to 12. With the PGX-D system, you can only use five per band with a maximum up to 12 using multiple bands. Again, if that didn't make sense, watch that video. I go into more detail about that but that's more than enough for this like entry level sure one. Okay, so the configurations that you can have with this, you can have the body pack and you can use that with a guitar, which is how I use the system. Or you can also use the body pack with a lavalier mic as well, or as a head with a headset mic. As far as handheld microphones, the different options that you have, you can have the PG58, the SM58, the Beta58, and the SM86. If you watched my one on the BLX one, you don't actually get an option of the SM86. I personally, if you are doing this with the microphone, I personally, uh, recommend avoiding the PG58. The SM58 is an industry standard for a reason. It's only a little bit more to get the SM58. The PG58 is really loud with the noise handling. The mic sounds fine to me. It's just, it's really noisy when you touch it. But if you do like the Beta 58 or the SM86, that's really up to you. The SM58 is more than enough and it's an industry standard for a reason. Okay, so like I said, you can change the channel on this system. So all you do actually to scan, you just push the channel button. It's scanning, it's scanning, it's scanning, and it found 01 as the cleanest channel right now. You can scan for the best and clearest channel. The way you sync them up, so this is on the, the body pack. Just open it up. You have this sync port right here. Push the sync button right here. Put it right next to it. It syncs over infrared. Now you can see it says ready, and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna set it to a different channel right now so you can see it's not 
ready if it's not synced up together. Push sync. It syncs up and then the ready light is on and you're ready to go. You also have the option to set this manually. If you don't like what it's finding, you hold the channel button and I can either change the first one or the second one. So I'll stop on this one and I can scroll through, set this to group zero through nine. I'm gonna put it back to zero and then I'm gonna set the channel. I'm gonna set the channel back to channel seven since that's what it was on. And that's actually the channel that I've used for years without problems. Resync. Light is ready, means it's ready to go. Nice and simple. Bonus feature on the side, this is of the PG system. On this one, you have an option, you can set it to mic level. So if you're using it with like a microphone, unity gain or negative 10 decibels. So you have a little switch here. So if the signal's too hot, you can set it to negative 10. So which is really nice if you have like a super hot active pickup guitar or active pickup bass or something like that. And you can also set it to mic if you're using it with like a lavalier mic, which sometimes I do since sometimes I do weddings and stuff like that. There's also a mute switch on here. So this is your power button. When it's green, it's ready to go. If you tap it, it's orange and it's muted. So that's really nice. So you can mute it and then unplug without getting that popping sound and then unmute it when you're ready to go as well which is really nice. Something a little bit different with the PGX-D, the digital model. There's actually just a knob that you turn. This is what it looks like in the manual. And then for the handheld microphones, you have a switch for zero unity gain or negative 10 decibels. Okay, so as far as pricing, so the PGX has actually been discontinued. They're only do selling new the PGX-D. So that's what I'm going to be going over. I did just want to go over the differences since some people do have the PGX system and they're curious on how it works and some of the features and stuff like that. So as far as with the PGX-D, with for a guitar, it's going to run you about $350. I think that is a fantastic price for something as reliable as this. Like I said, I used the PGX series for about five years and I had no problems with it. But it's a great deal. So as far as pricing with the microphones, at least on Amazon right now, they only have them like the transmitter and the receiver sold together for the SM58 and the Beta 58. So the SM58 is going to run you about $380 with the Beta 58. With that upgrade, it's $429. They do have where you can buy the PG58 microphone by itself for $170 or the SM86 for $250. So with that, you'll have to buy the transmitter. You'll have to buy the receiver separately. However, again, like I said, I do not recommend the PG58. I recommend just going for the SM58. And if you do plan to use it with a headset mic or the Britney mic, as they call it, it's $400. And if you plan to use it with a lavalier mic, it is also $400. And both of those use the body pack. So links to all of those will be down in the description now down below. And just a side note, if you do decide to purchase the system based on my video recommendation using the link down in the description down below actually does help out my channel. It doesn't cost you anything of their Amazon affiliate links. It just gives me a small kickback. And that's true for any YouTuber. If you use their Amazon affiliate links, it is just a simple way to help out their channel. So I would appreciate it. But links to all of those will be in the description down below. Okay, so as far as the main difference between the PGX and the PGX-D, the PGX-D is the digital one and the PGX regular one is the analog one. I actually don't believe that sure is making the PG analog one anymore and they're just doing the digital one. However, you can still find the PGX one used, but it's it's still a good system. I'm not a digital versus analog guy. Uh, I think they both sound great. Technology has come really far. If for some reason you only want digital or you only want analog, you can make that decision for yourself. So, you know, pause the screen if you want to read all of this. For me, I'm going to go over some of the main things on here that I think are the most important ones. In order to keep the video from getting too long, I'm not going to go over every single one of these. If you have a specific question, leave a comment down below. I do try to answer as many comments as I can. Something on here you might be worried about when you see the PGX digital, it says a signal latency of 3.5 milliseconds, and then the PGX analog has no latency. Nobody can hear a 3.5 millisecond delay. If anyone says that they can, they're lying. They, no one can hear that. The biggest difference between these, in my opinion, is how many systems you can use per band. So with the PGXD, you can only use five, up to five per band, with a total of 12 using multiple bands. And with the PGX analog, you can use up to nine per band and then use up to 12 with multiple bands. To me, both of those are completely fine. I do think that this system is targeted towards someone who's going to have one to four wireless on stage at once. Once you start adding more wireless, you're going to have to start upgrading. So to me, the fact that you can use up to five or up to nine in either of them is completely fine and completely usable. And again, if you aren't really sure what that means per band and using multiple bands and 
and stuff like that, watch my video and I go into more depth with it. But basically, it's just how many wireless can you use at once? Okay, so who is this system not for? So first of all, the antennas do not detach. So you cannot use these with antenna combiners and stuff like that. It's meant for people who only need to use a few wireless systems at once. So if you're going to be using a ton of wireless systems on stage, I don't think the system is for you. I would say if you plan to use one to four wireless systems, you can get away with that. You can get, I've gotten away with up to six wireless at once with the PGX system, the analog system, not the digital system. And it did work. If you have, you know, one with your bass player on one side of the stage, one with the guitar player on the other side of the stage, you know, and then two with the singer or something like that. And all the wireless are spread out across the stage. You're more likely, you're less likely to get dropouts depending on the environment. Wireless is just one of those things that really just depends on the environment that you're in and the RF signal and, and so many other factors. So you can use this with quite a bit of wireless systems depending on the environment. However, I personally would not recommend using more than four at once. If you're just looking at using one or two wireless systems, I think this system is absolutely great for you. And that is actually why I did end up upgrading. So, you know, I started becoming obsessed with wireless after using this one. And so because of that, I had to upgrade. You know, we have so many wireless in your monitors, microphones, and guitars. You know, I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with having a clean stage. I hate stepping on cables. So because of that, I had to upgrade and start using other systems. But I never had a dropout with this system. So yeah, that's who I recommend this system for. If you're using up to four wireless systems, I think this is great. If you're just using one or two, I think this is one of the best ones to go for. I am a little bit biased because I used it for so many years, but I also really love this system. Okay, so just really quick, just a few bonus accessories that are worth getting that aren't very much. You can see here that this is a right angle adapter. I definitely, I love having those because it just makes it go into the guitar so much cleaner. Otherwise it has, you know, the cable sticking out. So this cable is only like $17 to get. I recommend getting that one and then keeping the other one as a backup just in case something happens with this one. So it comes with the straight one, but if you get the WA304, and make sure, again, use the link in the description. It's only $17 to get the right angle one. It's definitely worth it in my opinion. And then you have a backup cable in case if something breaks with this one. Something else. So it does actually come with like clips in here. However, I like this. This is just a little pouch that you put this in. Locks in here and then you would you attach with Velcro to your strap. This is actually what I've been using for years and it works absolutely great. I still use it to this day. So it's like less than 20 bucks. It does help protect it and it just attaches to your strap. Super convenient. I really like it. Something else in mind, just get rechargeable batteries. You'll go through so many batteries if you don't. So I do recommend, I recommend the Energizer ones. Really, any of them will be fine. However, you do want to just look at the ones for the milliamp hours. This is 2,300 milliamp hours. They make some of them that are 800 milliamp hours. These will last longer. Just get those for sure. Link will be in the description down below. And then just a side note, there is a video that I did about a product called the MyVolts Ripcord. And you can power your gear with USB. So this is what the power supply looks like. This is actually the old one. They do have a newer one that's a little bit thinner but it's still kind of bulky. The MyVolts Rip Cord is so much cleaner. I actually use it on almost all of my wireless gear now because it just works so well. So check out that video to check because it's a really cool power supply and it just cleans it up, especially on a pedal board. It makes it not so messy and everything. It's definitely worth it in my opinion. So check that out. So. That's basically it. If you made it to the end of this video, just do me a favor and just hit the like button. It does a ton to help out the YouTube algorithm. It helps recommend my channel and my video to more people, so I would appreciate it. Again, purchase links to all of the products I talked about in this video or in the description down below. Using those links to purchase these if you are interested in the PGX system, it does help out my channel if you use those links. And again, it doesn't cost you anything. It just lets Amazon know that I sent you and it gives me a small kickback, so I would appreciate that. Hope that helped you guys out. Don't forget to check out some of my other wireless videos. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the rest of the videos in my Sure wireless video series. Next up is going to be the GLX. So if you haven't watched the one on the BLX, be sure to check that out as well. Check out some of my other playlists by clicking some of the links on the screen right now. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you next time.